And our next guest, without further ado, uh, Stuart uh, Tomp joining us now. Stuart, welcome back. How are you, sir? I'm great, Mr. John Rush. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear from you, too. We appreciate it. Cold and flu season for a lot of people. It's here. In other places, maybe not quite yet because the temperatures have been a little warmer in some spots, although it's around the corner. And in my notes here, it says that our kitchens could be harboring uh, an unexpected health hazard. It's true. I want to take a different angle to cold and flu. We always hear about vitamin C and elderberry and zinc right. and all of those immune modulators. But what happens if our cells are so deficient in omega-3s because we've been pouring soybean oil? We're hearing more about mm-hmm. it, seed oils down our gullet and driving inflammation, preventing us from being able to deal with a viral impact of the cold or something even worse. So I think people are doing themselves an enormous disservice by ignoring the fatty acids when it comes to strengthening the immune system as we go into the cold and flu season. Question for you. I just talked a moment ago about the story where Costco, the FDA, is making them recall 800,000 pounds of butter because it doesn't say, you know, contains milk on the packaging, which is absolutely, you know, lunacy, Stuart. You know, but, but my point of this, when talking about butter, and I, and I talked about this before you came on. You know, we've been trained over the years, you know, salt bad, this bad, that bad, sugar good. I mean, all these things that, frankly, Stuart, are opposite. In fact, butter has had a bad rap over the years because, you know, it's bad. It's bad for your heart. It's bad for this. It's bad for that. So then we substitute with things to what you just mentioned a moment ago. I mean, I'm not saying that everybody should just lather butter on everything that they're eating. But wouldn't butter, in a lot of cases, because it's natural, be better than some of the alternatives? You're making an excellent point. There's one caveat to that. If you do have the genetic predisposition, it's called APO4, APOE4. If you're that genetic allele, and it's rare, then you don't do as well with saturated fat. That being said, put that aside, there's been a giant conspiracy to tell everybody to stop eating butter and to eat soybean oil. Right. And so I agree with you completely. If we go back to lard and tallow and butter or even coconut fat or ghee like they use in right. other cultures, right. that's missing. That might be a missing link with what's going on in the diet. I couldn't agree more. Well, and the reason I say that is I just look back at, you know, my ancestors and I look at some of the women in my family where, you know, everything was home cooked. I mean, my mom, Stuart, was born at home back on a farm back in the day. I mean, the reality is... Uh, you know, they ate and did things differently back then. But yet what you're talking about are the very things that they used to cook and eat and so on. And yet they live to be, you know, I had a great grandmother that lived to be almost 100 years of age. I had a great aunt live to be 102. I mean, you look at that and say, well, wait a minute, what, what are we getting wrong today? <laughs> it's so, I'm so happy you're saying this. There's a rare fatty acid that's kind of trendy right now. They're calling it fatty 15 pentadecanoic acid, and they're trying to say it's three times more powerful than omega-3. It's all marketing. It's hogwash. Do you know where you get this stuff? Where? You get it in milk. You get it in butter. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Time out, time out, Stuart, because that's another one where we've heard for so long that, you know, the only people on earth, you know, the only beings on earth that drink milk are, you know, babies that, you know, once they're weaned, they no longer have milk after that. Of course, we're talking about animals, so there's no reason why humans should drink milk after they're quote-unquote weaned. And frankly, Stuart, I still love my milk. Well, there's certainly a place for it. And uh, that's why I call it the big fat story, why I always look forward to getting on your show. Because let's face it, as I said when I was on before, for some of you that have never met me, that we figured out the protein issue. Our kids are taller than us. Right. Right. We eat too many sugars. We know this. Right. But when it comes to fat, Wow, are we confused. Certainly the trans fatty acids are bad, but you're making an excellent point. There's been this giant rush to demonize butter and dairy products. And replacing that, we tell people to drink soybean oil, safflower, sunflower, cottonseed oil. There's been a thousandfold increase in soybean oil from 1909 to 1999. Now, I don't blame big pharma. I blame big food. Yeah, yeah. Because the reality is that the fatty acid, and you know where I'm going with this, that we are the most deficient in is omega-3. Yep. Now, there's a paper that just came out recently called Modulation of Inflammation and Immunity. 
by omega-3 fatty acids. Listen to this. It says semicolon, a possible role for the prevention to halt disease progression Mm. in autoimmune, viral, and age-related disorders. They have found out that most Americans that are so radically deficient in omega-3 can't mount the correct immune inflammatory response. Mm. Omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. But we are all out of balance. We're so far out of whack. So I strongly encourage people, please, Google omega-3 and immunity. There were studies, listen to this, showing viral diseases, including COVID, including COVID, Mm. showed improvement in Mm -hmm. symptom severity, recovery prognosis, and probability of survival with the use of omega-3s. But if you're not testing how much is in your body, and John, i got to ask you this. Did you do your omega-3 blood spot test? I did, and I'm pretty good. I'm not as good as I should be, meaning I need to do a better job of not only probably supplementing but eating the right things, which for all of you listening, you guys do a great report on that, Stuart, as to what I need to change dietarily speaking and so on. It's very uh, enlightening and instructional at the same time. There's nothing there that scares me. It's just, okay, here's some things that you need to improve in. What was your score? Do you remember? Oh, you know what? I should have brought that report with me. Hang on. I might be able to grab it for you. Keep talking. I might be able to grab it. While you're doing that. So the one thing I want to remind everybody is, you know, it's not like go hog wild on the saturated fatty acids, right? That's what we have in butter. But we certainly need some. The issue with too many saturated fatty acids, and those are ones we measure on our test, by the way. Okay. Palmitic acid. What happens when we eat too many saturated fats? Well, it induces something called NF-kappa-beta, which is a pro-inflammatory pathway, and then the expression of COX-2. That's the enzyme that converts the omega-6s into the pro-inflammatory signals. So that's why I want people to start testing and stop guessing. We measure 11 different fatty acids, the saturated fats, the omega-9s, the omega-6s, and the omega-3s. And that number is the most important number. Mm. My prediction... Listen, it will be on the standard blood panel in 10 years. It's really? more predictive of hmm. your future health outcome okay. than LDL, which is a joke, HDL, which is questionable, triglycerides, which is a residual risk, LP little a, a little better, omega-3, six balance, the omega-3 index, they're critical. Did you find your score? No, it's on my other computer, but I believe I've got a copy, so I'm still scrolling and looking for it. Okay, well, okay. Re- it. and really quick, question I have for you on all the things you just mentioned a moment ago. Why, why don't we test even for the right thing, Stuart? Well, because first of all, let's be fair, you know, the uh, omega-3 index and the 6-3 balance is only 20 years old. Okay. And we were stuck on Ansel Keys. Let's go back to butter. Ansel Keys told everybody, saturated fat raises LDL cholesterol, right? LDL cholesterol increases the risk of coronary vascular disease and death. Now, riddle me this. If statins are the number one selling drug in the history of the world, and most people's cholesterol is below 100, and if they had their way, they'd put it in the drinking water for kids and get it down to 50, Mm. why is coronary vascular disease still the number Mm. one killer? Good question. Yep. I'll tell you why, because yeah. it's actually inflammation, yep. and they know it. Yep. So what are you doing to find out how much inflammation's in your body? Now, look, at, I like the herbal things, turmeric, right, all of these other anti-inflammatories, but that's not what your body uses to resolve inflammation. What I'm talking about, the omega-6-3 balance score, that's the ratio. And I'm 27, point, I'm, I'm 27 to 1. Okay, the military suicide was 25 to 1. Okay. You're 20 sec. You want to be three to one. Okay. So, so what you can do is you can take more sardines, anchovies, more mackerel, cold water, oily fish. Okay. I like the balanced soil because yeah. that's what yeah. I'm doing. But what matters is the number. See, the reason I'm so excited about this is instead of arguing about which brand is the best, right. what's the ratio in the bottle, you are 25, 27? 27, 27. parts omega-6. So one part omega-3, what does that mean? You get a cold. You have an immune reaction. The immune system turns on, but it doesn't turn off as effectively because you're deficient in omega-3s. It's about balance. It's not about good or bad. They're both essential. The and and for, really quick, too, for everybody listening, what I did, too, Stuart, to make sure that I was getting what I felt like was the best 
result for me based upon what I do normally without supplementing or anything. I didn't do anything supplement wise, which I will do periodically. I don't do it daily, probably should, but I didn't do anything for quite some time. Then did the test to see where I was at based upon just what I'm eating, not with what I'm ingesting supplement wise. Now you'll like this. That test is a reflection of your red blood cell, and it only turns over every 120 days. Okay. It's not like a blood sugar test that you could inadvertently spike by drinking a glass of orange gotcha. juice. Gotcha. Okay. It's a reflection of the tissues. What's great is if you go on the Mediterranean diet in a bottle, that's what I like to call it, the balance oil. Right. Olive oil with the omega-3 and the polyphenols, we can get you back into balance in 120 days. Okay. So we're going to send you another test okay. after 120 days. We're going to get you on the intervention. Okay. That's why I love this, because let's stop the marketing. Let's stop the celebrity endorsement. Let's stop the advertising. I want to know your number. You know your LDL, your HDL, your triglycerides. Now you know your omega-6-3 ratio. Now on your results... Scroll down a little further. What's your omega-3 index? Uh, hang on. Okay, hang on. i got to go back to the you top. Scroll down because there's two numbers there. Yeah, okay. The Which one are you looking for? Omega-3 index. Is uh, 3.2. Okay. So in Which America, is a little bit in the red. I, I think I need to be down around, or I need to be higher. I need to be what, from like 9% up? Yeah. If you, if you can go from 3 to 9%, listen to this, it correlates to a 40% reduction in all causes of death. Okay. Of death. So people ask me now what I'm doing. And I say, you know how eventually everybody dies? Well, for the people that would like to put that off longer and live healthier, I help them achieve that goal. Are you interested in learning more? And if they say yes, I say we should talk. This is the most important number that you don't know. That omega-3 index is more predictive of your future health outcome than any biomarker ever. So why? It's only 20 years old. It's not mainstream medicine. They're finally having to accept that it isn't just about LDL. To your point, butter doesn't cause death, (laughs) okay? Right. It doesn't. What you need is to have the right ratio. So remember, there's saturated fats, mono, poly, and highly unsaturated fats. Your number, that it was what, 3% you said? Yeah, 3.2. 3.2. There are 100 100 fatty acids in the cell membrane and only 3.2% of your cell membranes are made of omega-3, EPA, and DHA. What's the problem? That red blood cell now is thick and sticky and rigid. The nutrients can't get in. The waste products can't get out. Can you imagine? It's like a hungry ghost. Mm. Then the red blood cell with all that saturated fat in there, see, a little bit too much saturated fat, not enough unsaturated fat, the red blood cell can't become half of its size to sneak into the microcapillary to carry oxygen Hmm. and nitric oxide and gases through the body. So check this out. When you get your number to nine, it will also increase your VO2 max. Okay. That's the ultimate number of longevity, VO2 max. Okay. It's the measurement of your oxygen metabolism. So here are the results. Your immune system will be better. Your brain will be better. Well, your brain is good. You're fast, man, right? Your skin will be better. Yeah. Aches and pains in the body start to disappear. Now, is it a panacea? Of course not. But when I say it's a modifiable risk factor for many forms of diseases, the most modifiable risk factor, you can put getting from four to nine is equal to quitting smoking, John. Hmm. Wow. It's equally as beneficial wow. as quitting smoking, and nobody's talking about it. No, That's they're not. That's why I love to come on your show. No, they're not, and, and I've learned, as you know, a little bit about some of this from some other interviews and things that we have done, and I've uh, had uh, plenty of guests come on and talk about the very things that you're talking about. So the reality is, Stuart, is it's sort of like, okay, the choir's now singing. There's more people like you doing this. Uh, I will say no one else has a test like this, which I'm I'm a data guy. I mean, I I fixed cars most <laughs> of my life until, you know, coming on air and doing this. So I understand how the mechanical end of things work. I like reports. I like data. You you know, it's that old saying, you know, you can't hit the target if it's not there in the first place. So if you don't know where you're at, how do you fix it? Exactly. And that's why I want everyone to please Test your omega-6-3 ratio. If you're interested in your health, if you're concerned about longevity, and how about this? The data says that no matter what we're eating, we're outliving our money. Hmm. That is paradoxical. Have you seen how many people are turning 100? Charlie Munger was planning his 100th birthday. 
So when I hear Pam and Spam and Ding Dongs and Chicken Nuggets and Hoes and Krispy Kremes are killing everybody, eh, I'm not so sure. You might be disabled. And if we're going to live longer than anybody, you need the cellular flexibility. Here's the other thing. Cell-to-cell communication. With that kind of a sticky, thick, sticky cell membrane like you have, you're getting a fraction of the optimal cell-to-cell communication. Hey, we need some more neurotransmitters. Hey, we need some more vitamin A. Hey, we need some more vitamin D. Mm -hmm. You can increase all of that simply by going from three to nine and going from 27 to one to three to one. And what I love about this is there's no sales shtick here. I can be as excited as I am. It's about the number. That's what's important. Well, I number one, thank you for all of this. I mean, I think this is a real solid, uh, it, number one, it's a tool that all of us can use, but you're a good, solid representative of how this works. Now, before I continue on for folks listening, because I'm sure they're wondering, okay, how do I get one of these? How do I do this, Stuart? It's very easy. You just go to testomega3.com, testomega 3 Dot com, and you will see all of the scientific experts that I am working with. I've spent my entire life in the dietary supplement industry. I've sold a billion dollars worth of supplements, wow. and now I'm on the biggest mission of my life to do what? To ease the suffering of others. We want to be the biggest preventative nutrition company on earth, measurably do- move the dial on public health, and look at what's happening now. We finally have people in the administration yep. that are very That's right. serious That's right. about making America healthy again. Yeah, I talked about that earlier as we opened up the program today, and I'm in. I mean, we've been doing this program here for this hour for about the last eight-plus years. Finally now have an administration that believes the same thing. And, and really, Stuart, we all know this is not hard to figure out. If we as a nation are healthier we're smarter. We cut a lot of costs out. I mean, everything improves the healthier our population gets. Exactly. I used to do a show a couple of years ago called Too Fat to Fight. Uh, okay. Yeah. That was a problem. How about too fat to be vaxxed? Well, that's a contradiction right now because people are confused about that. We are hemorrhaging. We are hemorrhaging so much money because we are yeah. so sick. So I want everyone to understand this is a public health emergency. Do your part. Get as healthy as you can possibly be. Don't be a drain on the system. Yep. I think this is the most modifiable risk factor of anything. Agreed. It's a simple one-second solution. Agree. Uh, and for all of you listening, very easy. The kit itself, everything's self-explanatory. It's not hard at all to do, Stuart. It's literally a matter of you know getting the kit, following the directions, mailing it off, and there you go. It's that simple. Yes, and then the balanced oil, really quick, it's 40% extra virgin olive oil with high polyphenols okay. and the highest quality omega-3. I call it a Mediterranean diet in a bottle. You stay on it for 120 days because that's how long it takes to turn the blood over, the red blood. Right. And then we send you a second test okay. complimentary. So start awesome. testing, stop guessing. You're, Stuart, you are it. You're the man. I appreciate it very much. I was looking forward to having you back on and going through all of this, and you're just a wealth of knowledge, and I appreciate you greatly. Thank you so much. Thanks for everything you do, John. You bet, Bye-bye. Stuart. Have a good one. And, yes, folks, get that test done. We just went through what my results were, and here were kind enough to send me a test, and I was honestly a little nervous thinking, okay, I eat pretty healthy. I watch what I do on a regular basis. I um, you know, do I do every single thing correctly? Well, you can tell that no, I don't. And there's some things that I'll get shored up. And that what we just said a moment ago with Stuart, what you, you know, you don't know what you don't know. The only way to know some of these things is to get some of these tests done and figure out exactly where you are and then make the adjustments accordingly, which is what we'll do.